Welcome everybody, Double Tap here, and today I bring you Prison Architect Tips and Tutorials 102. Before I get started, I just want to say I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there, and I also want to say I really appreciate all the love, likes, and all the comments on my first part to the Prison Architect Tips and Tutorials. So, with all that being said, let's jump right into today's video. All right, so picking up right where we left off, we're hopping back into the prison and we have about an hour in game time until the prisoners arrive. So I'm just doing a few less, uh, a few final steps here to finish up the prison and making sure that our lighting is good for when nighttime hits. So I'm just gonna drop a few more of these down as our prisoners arrive here. And as you can see, as the prisoners arriving, all our doors immediately lock shut in the prison. Things are about to get real. And as you can see, they have them just standing on the street waiting for the guards to individually bring them to the cells, as you can see being done right there. So that's just a cute little way that they bring them in. You'll be able to watch them individually bring each prisoner in do not worry the prisoners are not able to run before they actually get into the prison so it's okay if they stand out on that street it's not an issue here i'm going to just drop a few weight benches down for these guys because you know what's prison without workout benches i mean they that's all you really have to do in there i'm also going to drop a few phone booths down because this is their free time on rec so i make sure that it's they've got everything they need they've got some workout benches phone calls to call home all that good stuff you can see in the background the guards are still doing their job getting everybody into their individual cells before beginning the regular day on that note it actually just switched to eat time you can see in the top right there so that's what's next up on their agenda so you can see now that a guard has actually went and opened the gate for them and now they are standing outside of the canteen They can't get anywhere without a guard actually letting them in so you can see them just standing outside that's normal that's that's what you want for the game right now it seems to be an issue um with the guards not being fast enough that's simply because we don't have enough guards per inmate as well later on in the game you're going to be able to unlock bureaucracy parts where you're going to be able to tell the guards where you want to patrol so you can have guards patrolling up and down specific alleys so whenever a door needs to be opened you don't need to look very far so it's just for right now things can be a little messy and you can have prisoners waiting for entrances but it's not a big deal and it will be solved later everything is moving as we hope as you can see chow is getting done now and i'm remembering right away as once things actually get real that i'm missing doors in between my canteen and my kitchen it's so important so that your staff doesn't have to do that exactly you guys can see right there that the guard had to come let them out of the kitchen in order to bring the food into the canteen and why deal with that when i could just put a staff door in between and allow them to move in between the two as they please So here I'm just going to get the chief of the actual guards. I'm going to give them an office. I'm just going to highlight all these offices that I have pre-ready. And we're going to finish them off. And you guys know how we accomplish that. Going to be dropping in a desk in each of these, a chair and a cabinet. So, missing the doors between the canteen and the kitchen was not the only funny mistake I made. I did forget to put a staff entrance door in that actual fence to the yard. And as you can see, it's forcing our inmates to move through our office area in order to get to the yard, which is hilarious. And also, I guess, potentially dangerous for the workers inside of those offices. So we're going to make sure that we pause the game and add a staff door there, a fence gate. And uh, yeah, there you go. That'll be solved as soon as they add that little door into the fence there. Prisoners will no longer be moving through our office section. So we don't need to worry about that again. Thank goodness. More I think about it, the door on the left is kind of unnecessary so you could hypothetically just remove that altogether but i digress now that we have that little situation situated next time the 
inmates are ready to move out you can see that the door is finally put in there so they will be moving out of that door just now actually there you can see they're lining up at the door the guard's going to realize that and he's going to go open it for them right there so they can progress into their cells and now that that's done i'm going to just finish up these offices down here Hit that speed up one more time here. Let things go flowing. As you can see, here you go with lockup. Each of them move to their individual cells, and we are in action. As you can see, I also have a few things queued up in our bureaucracy tab already there. Important that you keep those things moving. And now that our offices are complete, I can finally add a foreman, a chief, and so on and so forth. And you can see right there between the canteen and the kitchen how much easier it is for the staff to move in between. So important. Yeah, it's just free time for the inmates right now. So uh, the doors are actually smacked open within their cell block there. So it is up to them. If we had a lounge room for the prisoners, you this is when they would take advantage of that and we will be adding that later on we will have some type of lounge area for these prisoners so they have something to do and potentially keep them a little bit happier and less violent that's always a good thing so yeah now you can also see that our funds at the top we are making $539 a day. So every hour you'll see us get a little bit of cash flow right there. You see $22. It might actually be uh, more frequent than every hour. But yeah, throughout the day, it will add up to $539 per day. And as you add inmates, you will make more money. So that's worth noting. The larger the prison, the more money or at least more potential money you have to make. Also more risk involved with that. But that is the name of the game. There you can see they're all eating during chow here, their final meal before bedtime. Yeah, this is the this is one of the best parts is finally getting the actual inmates in and seeing that you have an operational prison. As you can see, they're not going anywhere, and uh, the flow of things are moving pretty well now that they're all actually in and everything is finalized and set up so that they can move in between the necessary places without any mistakes like them running through our offices. Yeah, and now that that's all done, it's nice and things are moving exactly as I hope. And it's sleep time, so... You can take advantage of this time here to build a little bit more here we're going to build a staff room because if you see up at the to-do list it says that our staff is exhausted one staff member is exhausted now two so i'm going to start laying down the foundation to get this staff room going because it is important to have a place for your staff members to go relax it is far more important for them to have a place to relax than it is for the prisoners, obviously. So this is why we're going to make sure that we get this one going before we worry about any of the prisoners having a place to relax. Just seven minutes until that is complete and it will move on to the next task in our bureaucracy it's exactly what i want to see things unlocking in the background as we have things moving here gonna hire some janitors here this is one of my favorite hires in the beginning of the game because as you can see our prison is disgusting there's dirt everywhere it's filthy and look at them go look at them clean 
it's just so beautiful. I love it. I love once you have janitors down and they actually keep our prison organized. It's the whole name of the game, and it does drive me crazy in the beginning when I don't really have the money to get the janitors going. Because as you can see, they aren't exactly a priority. You can run a dirty prison for quite a little while there without people getting upset. But as soon as you do have the funds and things are moving, like I said, you have things flowing operationally and everything's going as you want. This is when you start. You want to start finessing things and getting the not necessarily high priority hires hired at that point so now that we got some janitors going they will always keep our prison nice and tidy and they will do this every day they will just go on and whenever there's something dirty they will go through and clean and once the prisoners leave their cell later on during the rest of their day they will take advantage of that time to clean individual cells as well but they have their work cut out for them they have the entire prison to clean right now so they are going to stay busy throughout this episode going to unlock groundskeeping there and the groundskeeper is essentially the same as the janitor except they will be cleaning the actual said grounds and uh, everything that's basically not inside of buildings will be their job to maintain again they aren't uh, essential staff members so I would leave them a little into the beginning of the game a little further into the beginning excuse me and uh, make sure that you do have them eventually because it is important to keep the upkeep of your prison going it does affect morale so just keep that in mind here i am just finishing off the walls to our staff room the reason why the exterior walls didn't build there is because i created a foundation that's surrounding a fence and because that fence is there the game was assuming that i wanted those fence to actually be the walls to the building but we don't want that so i am going to just select the walls and tell them to build those exterior walls out and that's what they're doing right now and then that staff room can be finished off There you go. Now we're going to have to do the same thing as the beginning of the game and just see what's required in that room at some point and finish it off and also make sure that it gets some electricity going. But we will do all those things for sure. Here you can see your total staff and uh, if you ever need to let anybody go you come in here if you realize that you've hired too many of any of the staff there is a charge per day per staff member so the less staff the less staff that you have the more money you're making each day so only make sure that you have the staff you absolutely need and going above and beyond can actually be a hindrance for sure so keep that in mind. So you can see our chefs are getting everything ready it will be chow time soon but uh this time they will be able to navigate between those two rooms much simpler very very important you can see right now actually see they're utilizing those staff doors moving in and out and they are not needing to bother the guards so that is what you want something so calming about running a prison like this it, as dark as the concept is it really is so enjoyable i love it it's hilarious 
Oh, and you can see down there at the south, I know it's not really shown properly, but you can see they are using the fence gate there instead of going through our offices. So that's a mission successful. I'm glad to see that. And here we found one of the little hidden artifacts of the game. You will find these little pages and little items throughout the game. If you click it, you'll get a little picture like this. And sometimes you can get a little side story to something that's going on within the prison. It's really cool. Really uh, allows you to feel a little bit more immersed in your prison and make these prisoners feel somewhat real. It's really cool. I like that they have those little additions, those little Easter eggs. And here, the stacks of wood you could actually sell for money for 152, pretty decent money. So if you ever have these stacks of wood lying around and they're not coming to clear them out, just click it and you can press sell and make some pretty decent money. So yeah, that's worth noting for sure. And as you can see, our janitors have done a great job and the prison is almost completely cleaned up. Just the holding cell and visitation to do after they are finished those offices. And at the bottom of our to-do list, you can see the number of prisoners and the number of meals. If those meals are not meeting the requirements, then you know that you have to either hire more staff, add more fridges and stoves, and so on and so forth. Just make sure that you are staying on top of those meals because your prisoners can starve to death. Now, as I was saying before, the only way that you're going to increase the amount of money you're making per day which is the whole name of the game is by increasing the population of inmates so here i'm going to plan out the expansion to our prison and it's going to be very similar to the original design that i did but it's just going to be expanding on it and building things out here you will notice that i don't build more solitary cells because it's not really necessary considering we already have six of them so keep that in mind too And as you can see, I never build anything before utilizing the planning tool. It doesn't matter what point of the game we're at. Make sure that you utilize this planning tool. It's one of the best things in the game. Now, here I do decide to make a calculated risk. I do build the extension on without surrounding it with a fence, which is what I typically do before building anything. I would build a surrounding fence around the exterior area that might be exposed, just in case if any prisoners come around while I'm adding the extension, that they're not going to be able to escape. The reason I don't do that here is because I am fully aware that they are on chow right now and after chow they are going to be moving down to the rec yard for some free time so I know that I have a few hours in game and they are going to be able to build up the extension before they get back to their cells and possibly be able to escape I don't recommend doing this but in this case I will get away with it but in the future, make sure that you actually surround out any areas that you plan on building around with a fence, and then you don't need to worry about this potentially happening. With that being said, I did get away with it here. I just wanted to clear that up for you guys so that you know for your building. So yeah, I actually think this is the perfect spot to wrap this tutorial up. We are expanding onto this prison. Everything is operational. We haven't lost any prisoners. None have been murdered yet. So everything's going as planned. Um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys know the drill. Please do like and subscribe. You guys got me past my original goal of 100 subscribers. I just want to say thank you so very much for that. I don't take any of you guys for granted. If you guys want to see this channel continue, please keep it up. Because what better motivation than seeing that you guys actually like this content and you want more. So with all that being said, I hope you guys all stay safe and healthy out here during this crisis. And I hope that this gave you a little break from everything that's going on. Until next time, double tap out.